And joining us on the line, all the way from the US of A, an Aussie girl, we have got Jasmine Bay. Jasmine, how are you doing? What are you doing in America? I am doing good. I'm doing all the things. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, you know, country music, yeah. well, music capital, I guess, now. Uh, just, you know, doing all the music, really. <laughs> and you're loving life in Nashville at the moment? I am. I mean, yeah. I moved here a couple of years ago, but I was back home in Australia for half of last year when everything kind of shut down for, a, well, you know, well, still shut down in yeah. Australia, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I love it. It's the place to be for me and the kind of music yeah. that I'm doing and the networking and the shows and uh, you never know what's going to happen. You know, yesterday something happened to a show that you just you couldn't expect. So, you know, I love it. <laughs> well, what happened? Tell us. Oh, what happened? Right. Okay. Well, there's a, there's an artist um, called Priscilla Block. Um, yes, yep, I'm sure yep. her. Oh, you know, Pris- yep, you know about yep. Priscilla. Well, um, well, I actually wrote my single that, that I'm that I'm here to talk about. Actually, so I wrote it with Emily Kroll, who wrote Priscilla's breakout hit, "Just About Over You." She wrote that with Priscilla. Um, and uh, I was playing on the stage with my friend Sasha at uh, down on Broadway at Jason Aldean's bar, and uh, someone requested a Priscilla Block song, so I played it. And uh, coincidentally, my friend Sasha, who I was playing with, um, used to kind of work with Priscilla a little bit in music. Yeah. So I sent out kind of a message to her and one of the co-writers we know and said, you know, Jasmine just played this song, you know, and Priscilla happened to be down the road at the football game. So decided to come on down to our show. Um, I'd never even met Priscilla in person, uh, but, you know, we all know the same people, obviously. So she came down and uh, I played the song again and then she got up on stage and uh, used my maiden, you know, Aussie yep, guitars, yep. and uh, played a song for everyone and gave us all a shout out. It was so lovely. You know, she obviously, she wasn't getting anything out of it. You know, she's all signed to big labels now and touring the country. But um, it was really lovely to see that, um, you know, a girl who was really one of us only a year ago um, and now is making, you know, headlines in Rolling Stone magazine is like still, you know, coming to support support all of us and it gives me chills just just talking about it because it's really what we're all kind of aspiring to do so yeah it was really great that is great to hear because uh for so long i haven't heard those stories normally when you you know prior to the the covid situation Uh that that was a regular thing that you know an artist would Uh share that story but that's the first one i've heard in such a long time so i was soaking (laughs) that in so that's great thanks for sharing that jasmine really appreciate that so I, I take it life is pretty normal in Nashville at the moment, uh, unlike back here and back home. Right. I mean, pretty much. I mean, I mean, you know, you have your little things. You know, put your mask on when you go into a into a store and things like that. And um, you know, I, when I play on Broadway, I do you know have a tendency to go through the back entrance if I can. And yeah. uh, but that that's a personal choice for me. It does get pretty crowded down there. Uh, so things are, you know, pretty, pretty normal. Uh, I know up, up for further north, uh, in California, I have good friends there. It's not quite the same. Um, but down here, things are going, going pretty busy. Broadway is insane as usual. Um, all the lunatics, the wonderful lunatics that we love. (laughs) And, uh, you know, uh, we, we get the crazy song requests that, uh, you know, like play chicken fried 27 times in one four hour show. And, uh-huh. you know, uh, we love it, you know. <laughs> yeah. What do you miss from back home? What do I, ah, uh, well, I mean, honestly, the, the, I mean, obviously my family and friends, yeah. I haven't seen them in over a year now. Um, but the ocean, really, oh, okay. to be honest. Yeah. I mean, the nearest ocean to Nashville is seven hours away drive. Um, so that's, that's like, you know, almost like the distance, what, Brisbane to, to Sydney, I think. Uh, maybe I just made that up, but I think that that is. Yeah. But, so, but Jasmine, you're, you're an Aussie girl, and, and for us, distance is nothing. I mean, we travel seven hours just for, you know, a McDonald's, so that's nothing. <laughs> oh, my God. I actually ran into an Aussie at a, at a nail salon today. I kid you yeah. not. I heard her talking, and I said, do you have an accent? She said, do you have an accent? And she was from Brisbane. She just moved down from L.A., and uh, we got talking about how everyone here drives. They'll drive, like, 15 hours. Yeah. And in Australia, I feel like we, we fly, you know? We fly. <laughs> we are, you know, more into that kind of thing. So, yeah, I do miss that, uh, miss that a lot. And, 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 you know, the Aussie, I, I do think we are a bit more of a chilled people. I yeah. really do. <laughs> that we are, that we are, very much so. 
Yes, well, I miss that. <laughs> well, we're loving your new song too, X's and Y's, and that which we're playing here on Flow too. It's a great little song. So, what's your favourite flavour of Ben and Jerry? <laughs> I knew this was going to come up. Um, well, last night, I actually, I mean, I love Ben and Jerry, so I don't eat it too much. I mean, we've got to be careful because yeah. uh, when you get a pint, it's hard not to eat the whole thing in one go. So, I do love this one I tried yesterday that had like cheesecake. In it, oh, cheese, okay. caramel cheesecake and cookie, like a chocolate cookie in it, all in this one thing. I couldn't believe that it existed. I want to try the ones with the top, the hard chocolate on the top that you have to yep. crack. Yep, I want yep. to try that. Um, you know, but honestly, have they ever made a bad flavor? Um, I've actually watched a little documentary thing on them, and they even have their own graveyard for flavors that they aren't bringing back. It's a physical graveyard. Wow. <laughs> And yeah, it's hilarious. Well, we do enjoy a bit of Ben and Jerry's from time to time, but I was just curious about that, about your, the flavour. <laughs> so good. <laughs> and this song, it came about inspired by a breakup, so it, it's very almost a personal song for you. Well, I mean, honestly, I think that everyone has an ex, whether it's an ex-partner, an ex-friend, even some of us have, like, ex-relatives that, like, in hindsight – seem like a why like yeah. why did I why did I waste my time on you in the first place why did I date you in the first place yeah. and you go through that that often that sad time at the start and once you get over that initial sadness and regret you turn around I think and you go to your friends and you laugh about it you're like oh my gosh like it, whether it's like that guy in high school or you know that girl that was just like a little bit crazy you know it we all have laughed about it at one point or another, I think, and that's what this song is about because once you get over it, all you can do is make a joke because what, what else are you going to do in life, honestly? Yeah. <laughs> you might as well laugh about it and chalk it up to experience and just yeah, exactly. and enjoy telling the tale and, and twist it to your advantage every time as well. Exactly, exactly. So we thought there's so many sad songs in country music and I raised my hand, I love to write a good, sad, melancholy country ballad. Um, it's one of the reasons I fell in love with the genre in the first place, but we wanted to write a whimsical one, mm. and uh, this is a good one, good for your windows down, good for your, like, getting pumped playlist. Like, uh, it's so great, and I've been very appreciative of how Australia specifically has taken a liking to it. I'm actually quite, like, like shocked at how, how much uh, it's done well in, in just uh, the very short time it's been out. So I'm very grateful to people like you, Graham, for for talking to me. So, uh, sorry, Clayton. Good yeah. frame. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I, I get that for often. talking to me. Really? Okay, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It, it happens. <laughs> um, for talking to me, I, I, it just, you know, it, it it's so great that my home, what, you know, where it all started is, is really, like, accepting, even though I've moved, you know, yeah. it's always going to be my home and I'm always going to, always going to hope that people back there are supportive of me and I'm really seeing that with this song so yeah <laughs> it is a great fun song and it's one of those that yeah, I, I know the girls will be as they're dancing to it they'll be singing the, <laughs> the lyrics back to you especially the, the LOSER line I, I'm sure they'll be doing oh that my gosh. I'm sure that gets louder every time Yes, uh, it's a good one. I, I, I do when I do play it even acoustic downtown here. By the second and third chorus, people seem to know the words. Yep. So uh, it, it, it's pretty. It's a good one for that for sure. I'm glad that you picked up on that. <laughs> Jasmine, you're a songwriter. You're you're doing your own songs and that and performing in that as well. Do you love writing for yourself or for other people? I mean, I, I mean, I love writing in general, and usually. I will say I'm writing with myself in mind because I find it easier yep. if there's a personal experience. Like we, I was going to write today and, uh, and my friend brought the song in, but it was actually from a conversation we'd had together. So it was very easy for me to write about because I had been there. Um, I do find it harder when it's someone else. Um, but in saying that, I have written with and for other artists too. It all just depends on the situation because every song i'm sure you're aware comes yep. about in a very different manner uh so it just depends on the situation um i just love i love writing because you get to put out things that you might not have been able to say 
And that's the, the thing for me. Some of them can't say it, but I can sing it. <laughs> well, many artists over the last 12 months that I've spoken to, they've been doing the Zoom thing and that, where they were used to being in the same room. Are you doing in the room or Zoom? How is it working for you at the moment as a songwriter? Yeah, I do a lot of both, honestly. Uh, like today, it was an in-person. It was some, uh, you know, some friends in town. I write, you know, with friends uh, just the other day. Of One friend was in you know, up near past Boston in Cape Cod and the other one was in New York and then I'm yeah. here in Nashville. So, you know, um, I've done ones, you know, where I've done ones, you know, when I was back in Australia where one person was here in Nashville and one person was in California. Um, I, I still am doing some Zooms, but I do think that there is a different dynamic on Zoom. I'm yeah. sure you're aware yeah, of the yeah. term Zoom fatigue. Yeah. Um, it's very real and it, drains your creative energy a lot uh well any energy so in the room i prefer the dynamic but you know if, if we're going to have to do it on zoom i would never say no because i think you know you can get a great song some of the best hit songs that are coming out now have were written on zoom yeah so it can be great someone said to me that when they're on zoom they're more focused because they know they've got to get it done quickly that's they just feel this pressure to get right. things done quickly but when they're in the room they're a bit more relaxed and casual and, yes. and wait for that spontaneity spark to happen and so you that, know what that, that's i would a, agree yeah. Yeah. i have never said that out loud but i would actually agree on zoom there's not as much of this like let's banter and talk about our day it's like let's get this done it's more of a job it does yeah it feels like more of a job when it's on zoom yeah. um and i i know it is a, it is my job but I also, you know, I chose this career because it's the thing I love the most. And the more it feels like a job, the less I think you start to love it. Yep. So I prefer to keep it as fun as we can. <laughs> Why not? Why not indeed? Jasmine, can you remember the first song that started you on this journey where you are now? What was that first song that you heard and you went, I want to know about this, I want to do this, and that's my life? I sure can. And I don't think many people can say that. Um, and I was uh, six years old at Christmas time, um, and my uncle and auntie, we would spend Christmas with them every year in Ballarat in out of Melbourne, um, you know, the gold rush. Yep. Um, and they were playing Casey Chambers' album, album The Captain, and I fell in love with the album and, and the song The Captain, but all of the songs on it. And, you know, and her brother, Nash Chambers, produced it. The whole family, her dad, Bill, played on it. Yeah. Her mum even sold her merch. Like, the whole family situation. And um, a whole way, a whole drive home, I was, mum says, I was singing it in the car. And she said, I would sing it in my sleep. And I don't know how that's what? possible. And I feel like she just made that up for, like, my e-network special one day or something yeah. like that, you know, like... Um, and since then, I, I was like, I've got to do this and get singing lessons. And within a year, I was playing guitar and school talent shows in assembly and take me to Tamworth Country Music Festival and I went and I saw Keith Urban and um and and it didn't really matter that any no one else in Melbourne was, that I knew was really listening to country music um they'd be listening you know Christine Aguilera Britney and whatever and yep. I'd be listening to the, you know now known as the chicks and Casey Chambers Johnny Cash uh and I'd play that at the uh, talent shows and they didn't know what was going on but I loved it and you know I guess if I didn't stick to it I wouldn't be here now and now I actually I know I know Casey's brother Nash um, he lives here and uh, he's lovely and I attribute a lot I, a lot of my career and life choices to her and him and um, it, it's, it's quite it's quite amazing, I think, how it comes full circle. And I'm very glad that I remember that it was that album and, and her and him that, that have helped me get there. And that it was Aussie, you know? Yeah, what a great story. What an absolutely brilliant story. And uh, I love you. You, you. you took it to a whole new level for me. I didn't expect that, but thank you, Jasmine. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Normally it's a quick answer, but you, you took it to a whole new level, and I absolutely love it. And that's a, I'm glad. <laughs> thank you for sharing that. Uh, I'm just looking on your website, jasminebay.com, and uh, where's the merch yeah. section? Because I'm at the moment, because we're not doing right. gigs for a lot. There's no merch I can't promote for you. I know. Well, you actually can buy some stuff, but I haven't set it up my website. You know how slammed I've been out here in Nashville trying to do this single? And obviously, I'm an independent artist. i got to do all this by myself. I just redid the website, you know. Um, but I haven't done a merch section. I've got some T-shirts, though, 
for um, X's and Y's, they say no X's, not even in Texas on yes, it. Yes, yep. And, um, and, yeah, you can grab them only, but only in America right now. But you know what? I'm coming back to Australia at the end of the year. It is happening. COVID is not stopping me. <laughs> and um, we're doing some down there as well. When I get back, I'm going to be able to do that. So um, if, if you're interested and you want anything or you just want to chat, please send me a message or an email or Instagram, whatever you want. Um, we'll find a way to get something to you somehow, even if they have to get sent to my mom in Melbourne and she can go to the post office and send them to you. She's my, like, number one fan, so she'd do it, honestly. I'm sure <laughs> mum will. I'm sure mum will. Uh, JasmineBay.com is the website, folks, and it's got all the contact details and all the information right there. Go and have a check it out of it. And and hopefully when you get back to Australia, we can have another chat too because I'd like to know more and there's some other questions I'd like to get from you, but we'll deal with that another day. But at the moment, we've got your song ready to go. I know the Flow listeners want to hear it. It is a fantastic song they're going to be singing along to it jasmine without any shadow of doubt so uh if you could please introduce it for us thank you so much for spending time with us please stay safe and we look forward to seeing you and catching up with you when you get back in the country thank you so much for chatting with me clayton uh well uh this is my brand new single x's and y's a new study shows that fewer women are getting married the percentage of women who have never been married Should be sitting on a couch right now With my friends Ben and Jerry And tears running down 